Hi, everyone. This is your host, Kristen Howe, and I am so excited to welcome you to our call with today's guest, Karen Abrams. For over 10 years, Karen has been a practicing Theta healer. Now, Theta healing is a unique form of meditation where practitioners enter the Theta state. There, they're able to shift their thoughts away from negative, limiting beliefs to more positive perspectives. It's a process of healing that can free people from longstanding emotional burdens and chronic or unhealthy physical conditions. Karen first came to Theta Healing after watching a friend transform her life with it. Curious, Karen began to study Theta techniques herself, gaining immediate and lasting relief from chronic health issues that had overwhelmed her for years. She also discovered that Theta Healing improved her relationships and helped her achieve greater professional success. A UCLA graduate in psychology, Karen honed the listening and observation skills critical to Theta Healing through her extensive experience in the education field. Karen is now a master Theta Healer, certified instructor, and relationship expert. Her practice is filled with clients and healers from around the world. And on today's call with Karen, you will discover how to release self-defeating habits. You'll discover techniques to connect with that constant source of support that surrounds us every day. You'll find out ways to move forward with joy, and you'll discover how to recognize and receive love and good fortune with clarity. And this is really exciting. We actually will be doing a group theta healing session on the call, so be sure to stick around for that. So Karen, I am so excited to have you here. I can't wait. Thank you for joining us. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the call. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so happy that we finally get to do this. This is very exciting for me. I know. I'm really psyched. And I would actually love to have you start off by sharing some of your story with everyone listening. Um, and, and one of the things that we're most interested in is hearing about some of your turnarounds, you know, maybe when things weren't going as well as you'd hoped, and then, you know, you experienced some turnarounds so that you manifested the current level of success you have today. Oh, okay. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> You're putting a new twist on an old question. I like that. Um, Well, first of all, I got into Theta Healing because I had been suffering from about six years of anxiety that was really permeating my life. I had been in therapy for about a year and a half, and we were really working it well and doing wonderful work. But every day I still had that anxiety. I still woke up shaking every day and shook all day long. And if I ever thought that for a moment I had a a relief and if I noticed that I had relief, then I would uh, immediately, it would knock back in. Mm. So it had become just something that my nervous system did, you know, kept me in fight or flight. So when a friend of mine told me about Theta Healing and this wonderful, wonderful healer, Theta Healer named Viana Stiebel, who is the founder of this work, she had been working with uh, Viana for, you know, a, a period of time and all of these things in her life changed. Her relationship changed. She got out of a bad relationship or I should say an unhealthy relationship. Let me put it to you that way. It wasn't bad. Hmm. Um, she straightened out her career. She, you know, came from the brink of literally, uh, very serious health issues and started making money. And I just looked at that and I remember saying to myself, you know, she, she was she was going to be hosting a class that Diana was going to be teaching, Diana Steibel. And so I remember saying, well, do I want to take it? Everything seems to be okay in my life. And I remembered this uh, quote just kind of came floating in my head from a friend of mine who said, you know, most people just are fine being fine, but they never <laughs> even reach for great. You know, why don't we reach for feeling great? And it hit me and I went, oh, I could do that. You know, like all of a sudden... So I ended up taking the class, and it was the three-day basic theta healing class that I teach now, too, and I noticed a tremendous amount of space in front of me when I finished the class, and I didn't even know what that meant. All I could tell you is I was, I was like swimming in my apartment. I'm like, what is all this space in front of me? And so all of a sudden, it hit me that my body, I didn't have anxiety anymore, that my body was out of fight or flight for the first time in six years. Wow. And yeah, that blew me away. And that even when I noticed it, it didn't come back. So that was huge in and of itself. So I signed up for practice classes and advanced classes. And anytime, 
you know, I went to Idaho where Viana is, where her her institution is. I had, when every time she came out here, I took classes. I had a friend, had pri- private uh, practice classes. I did everything I could to study it. And I don't know that I knew exactly what it was or how it was going to impact my life other than I was going to use it myself. It was a really remarkable coping skill. And I was going to use it for myself. I was going to use it for my friends, but that's all I knew. And needless to say, over, you know, 10 years later, I, here I am talking to you, you know, and talking to people all over the world and helping people all over the world use this modality. And I feel very grateful. My whole life changed in such a huge way, you know, big in the beginning and then subtly and then big and subtle. And, you know, I always say this work is, is like the lightest way of letting go of the heaviest things in your life. And uh, where you don't have to kind of revisit that you got, you know, hit by the bus. You've just got to let go of that energy and that trauma energy so that you can move on in your life. And um, that really helped me to let go of a lot of things that I didn't even know I was holding on to. And then a lot of them that I knew I was holding on to. So it was, it's been quite a journey, I have to say. Uh, I just thank God every day that I have this work and that I can have this in my big bag of tricks you know <laughs> I love that my big bag of tricks and yeah. actually everyone everyone just so you know um, last week I actually had a session with Karen so that I could be even more informed and we'll we'll get into that in a little bit just because I do want to share it was really remarkable so um, you know just to give you an idea this is this is a pretty cool thing can you describe for everybody uh, just so that they're not I'm sure a lot of people know what we're talking about, but Mm -hmm. just in case, can you describe what Theta Healing is? And even just, you know, your particular sort of viewpoint will be helpful. So even if we do know, it'll be helpful to hear it from your your voice. Sure. Well, I think this this work, basically, it's a simple meditation, okay? On the most basic level, this is all it is. We're doing a meditation process to connect us to source, to God, to universe, whatever your name is for that energy that's created everything. Some people call that all there is. And once you connect to that energy, you are asking for healing either on yourself or someone else. Now, physiologically, what happens when you connect to that energy in that meditation is your brainwaves become theta brainwave dominant. That's hence the name theta healing. And our theta brainwave is our super learning brainwave. We know this already. Scientifically, we know this. It is the one that children are in most of the time, which is why they learn so quickly, why they're so open to information. It is the brainwave we go into when we have that stunning realization. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. I did what? (laughs) Or, oh, my gosh. It's that simple, you know. And so this is the aha moments brainwave that just brings all of our knowledge together and synthesizes it. And boom, we're into the groove. And we know from hypnotherapy that it actually it actually connects us to our subconscious. So if we know we're in the subconscious mind and that we believe that the subconscious mind is in every cell of the body, I'm not sure we'll ever be able to prove it one way or the other, but we know we have a subconscious mind. And we can go in there and then energetically with this divine energy that we're using, that we're co-creating with, change people's belief systems, but only with their consent. I cannot do anything to anybody or make anybody do anything. So this isn't one of those um, things where it's out of beyond your control. It's all about your free will. So I will ask if you like energetic downloads of feelings, like what it feels like to be unconditionally loved and supported and, you know, what it feels like to move forward with joy in your life. You can let go of the toughest things like regret, like trauma, like hatred and grief and resentment. And the one that always is the kicker for me is forgiveness because we have never really been given a technique to forgive someone or a definition to help us forgive somebody. And what I found out inside this work and in a theta meditation was that forgiveness was about letting go of the pain that someone has caused you or that you have caused yourself. Mm. And when we get to that place and we have had a very mixed history with someone 
you know, it's a special, like a family member or a longtime friend or something. And we've held on to that forgiveness. We haven't wanted to let it go and give it to them because we didn't want to give them the satisfaction of, you know, knowing it was okay that they hurt us, right? That's mm. usually what our response is. That, that, um, it, it goes, well, wouldn't you like to let go of the pain that person caused you? And usually the answer is yes. Mm. You know, if you just ask that question, I bet most people would say yes. And so it really opens that door for you to let go of that pain. And we definitely can be very judgmental towards ourselves so that when we've made mistakes that we can, you know, we go, I can't believe I did that, right? I yeah. can't believe I did that. There's serious amounts of fear of failure out there that, um, and fear of the unknown, you know, is another big one. And those can be dealt with. So you can let go of these fears and these phobias and learn what you were meant to learn because there was a reason you got that fear. There was a reason you had that belief or were holding on to the resentment, whatever it is, you did have a good reason. It may not have been logical, but it was a good reason. And so what we're able to do is go in there energetically and help you shift it, find the bottom belief there, help you shift it. And then the house of cards falls. And all you and you become just more of your authentic self. And that house of cards was all your, you know, your baggage. And I know for myself, I noticed it, the first time I ever noticed I was becoming more of my baggage and less of myself was in my 20s. Once I was, you know, sort of out of the house and um, living in my own and trying to figure out who I was, you know, and I, I always call that the second adolescence. So <laughs> it's it's just so amazing to just become more of who you truly are and what I noticed in myself and you were talking about you know shifts in yourself that I had become someone who had a very low level of depression that was just sort of my base level you know that and what I can tell you now is that with all of the work that I've done that I'm really content I'm a happy person and I'm content. I always knew I was a happy soul and I had a happy soul, but I felt like I lost her, you know, somewhere yeah. in the shuffle, I lost her along the way. And then what's happened is when you let go of all of that junk, all of a sudden it just naturally comes back to you. And I know that, you know, no matter what's going on in my life, I know that no matter what challenges appear at different points in life, that I will always naturally float back up to the top and be content because that's where, you know, that's my true north now, you know, mm. and I will always go back there. I will do everything I can to get back there because that's my natural state. Whereas other people, and definitely that was me 10 years ago, would say if I could just get to that low level of depression, you know, just the, that borderline slight depression, I'll be fine. Right. And that's just me being normal. So, no, I'm I'm going back. I will always return to that contentment and to that joy. Mm, I love it. Well, a, for, a couple of things that you said that I just I really want to sort of bring them. I, I want to, like, highlight them just mm -hmm. for everybody listening. Uh, the, the whole forgiveness thing, because I do think that that is such a struggle for so many people because they're scared <laughs> if they forgive that they're saying it's OK. Exactly what mm -hmm. you said. And so the, when you when you put it that way. When you say, you know, forgiveness is being willing to let go of that pain, I think that's so powerful because it's it, it really just puts a different a different angle on it that makes you understand why it's so essential because that pain keeps us stuck. Am I am I right? right. Absolutely. Don't you think it just it you know, people it creates, you know, physical conditions in your body because you really feel it. You know, it that yeah. some people it feels like a you know, people will tell you that that um I feel like I have, you know, a, a, a spear in my side or a knife in my heart or, you know, this hit me right in the gut, right? Yep. Those are physical feelings that are real, that are occurring on every level in your body. So it's, it's chemically they're happening and physically they're happening. And I always say one of the other things that I learned in this work was that whatever you don't resolve in your life, your body is going to resolve for you. Hmm. So... Given that, why not? <laughs> yeah. Why not just let it go? You know, you know, it, it's 
it's just, you know, our health, that is just so important, right? I mean, if you don't, we talk about that a lot and you hear, you know, I remember being younger and hearing my older relatives talk about it. Like, if you don't have your health, you don't have anything, right? They're like, yeah, 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 whatever. I'm going to run around for five hours, right? Yeah. And, and, um, but you realize that, that when things are going on in your body, your focus is away from everything else except your body. Mm. So if you've got a business or you're working or you've got a family or whatever, all of your attention is now on this pain or this condition or this thing that I have to fight through, that I have to struggle through. But if you can let it go, wow. There's a, there's a great story actually of um, my teacher, Vianna Steibel. She tells it a lot about a kid who this little boy, this young boy had colon cancer and he had, she felt like he was going to die. She, I mean, that was her hit on it. And um, so she was doing a session on him and found out that he hated his father. And so she asked him if it was okay, if he, if, if it was okay to let go of all of that hatred and anger he had towards his father. And he said, yeah. And he had a spontaneous healing and wow. the colon cancer went away. And look, that's an extreme example. And that's why I'm giving it to you. Mm-hmm. Um, there are, there are many examples of all the way from very, very subtle shifts to really big, huge instant healings like that. And mine is on the spectrum also. And, uh, but that's just a really huge example of what emotions, how our body takes it on to try and help you heal the issue and pay attention to what the real issue is. So if you can get in there and release that. And then when we release things in theta, we also replace it with unconditional love and support. So you're never empty. So you know how, do you know those people? And you may have, I always figure there's always one relative in every family that is the one is like the list list keeper. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, he did that to me. Oh, 20 years ago, he he didn't come. He didn't have a thank you note for that present I gave him. And so he's never coming back, you know, (laughs) that person. (laughs) And they have so much, all they do is hold onto that resentment, write the lists out. And look, we've all been guilty of that. I mean, I've, I've had lists before. And, and if I notice them, I'm like, Ooh, get rid of that. <laughs> Don't want to hold on to that. That's just insurance for misery. Right. And, um, right. Those people who identify with their anger as if that is their life force, when you can help them, when they're ready to be helped, they won't feel empty afterwards because a lot of those people say, well, if I'm not angry, who am I? Mm-hmm. And here you can find out who you are. You can find out who you are from God's perspective. And you can be filled with love instead of anger and see where that takes you, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, and, you know, it's interesting that you say that. So the, the list making or the keeping mm-hmm. score or even, um, you know, I know someone who she is literally addicted to other people being in pain, not because she wants them to be in pain. And I don't just mean physically, I mean, Mm -hmm. in their lives, but because that's the only way she can feel useful. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, there's things like that. And those are really, really self-defeating habits. Those are self-defeating perceptions on life. But how do we, you know, how do we start to make that shift? If, if, so if anybody listening here is like, Ooh, that, mm-hmm. that is me, you know, you just mm-hmm. said, you'll catch yourself with a list and you're like, Ooh, gotta, gotta let go of that. I mean, you know, some, someone on this call might say, well, yes, that's easier said than done. I mm-hmm. know that I've tried to let go. So what's something that, that they can do? Well, you know, with this work, when you go into that meditation, you're connecting to that divine energy, which like we said, we're able to access our subconscious mind. And what it does is help our mind talk to our bodies. Hmm. You know, essentially, that's what we're doing. We're trying to find that direct line, right? And Mm -hmm. so through soda, through this meditation and coming in, you can get, we can get that direct line to your subconscious so that your subconscious can talk to your body and we can change this. So um, it's just really important for people to, to be open to shifting that kind of behavior and seeing what they can do instead, you know, because we get into these habits and, and it's important to, you know, one question that's really great, and if you don't have an energy modality at your disposal is, what's the benefit of my staying angry? What am I getting out of it, right? Mm. And usually it's because we really feel like somebody wronged us, you know? Right. And, and or that we want to be on our high horse about it because we want to be the righteous ones. We're the good ones. We got hurt, right? 
right. they do the hurting, you know, and, and so there, there's a different thing. And I, and I really connect to that story that you just told me about, um, about your friend or this person that you know, because I had for a very long time, and this was, I think this was, you know, kind of at the beginning of within a couple of years of um, my learning Theta is that I felt like I always wanted to be needed by other people. And that was the mm. only way I felt loved. And I don't know if you can connect to that, but that, that was a really big deal to me. And so I ended up with a lot of friends who took a lot from me because yeah. they needed it. And I gave it to them. But when it was time to turn the tables and I said, hey, you know, I'm really hurting around this stuff. It was sort of like, well, you know, that boy, that, that must be really hard for you. Let me call you back, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and um, and and I I just needed to be needed, and but I didn't know how to receive love. And so I had to learn how to do that and learn how to love myself, you know, really literally energetically so that 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 need went away. And even though what I do for a living is help people out of whatever's going on with them or help them feel even better than they already do, I don't have that need to be needed anymore. Hmm. And I don't get that kind of, that kind of person doesn't necessarily call me um, because the one who just wants to pull everything out and then get out of there, you know? Right. I get people who are very gracious or very grateful, who are very open to healing, who are ready to heal now, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and we got, come from that place. But I absolutely understand that needing to be needed thing. And I'm, and I'm, and I have to say it feels much better to uh, relieve that, <laughs> release that from my body. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's one of yeah. those things where you're like, no, I see that you're getting your value from that. Mm -hmm. You're valuable already. Like you just, right. you're breathing. And so you're valuable. Okay. So let me ask you this. You, and I love this. Um, you, you said, you know, Kristen, the title for this call is ready or not. Here I come. So mm -hmm. I love that. What, what does that mean? Why did you want to call the call, you know, ready or not, here I come? I think it's very funny. I think it's very playful. So what do you mean by it? I was going to joke with you and say, I have no idea. What do you think? <laughs> um, please help me. Caller, caller. Um, I, look, if we're talking and whoever else is listening, we're all in the same soul group. We're all going through this together. Mm -hmm. And I believe that there's this huge um, swell of positive energy that's coming up for everyone mm -hmm. that um, it often can bring up very deep issues right now. Cause I know a lot of people I can tell you from my clients and my friends and myself were hitting some issues that were like, no, oh, you know, like it just bottom core solid, like, whoa, that was yeah. at the bottom of the basement there. Thank you. Um, because we're being called to be present and be in the mm -hmm. moment now. The only way we are ever able to successfully deal with what's going on in our lives to either bring more success, more joy, or we're in something that is very tough, a very tough transition, and we're trying to get through it without, you know, having our car break down and a double mortgage payment and getting fired from our job and all of those things that kind of spiral the other way. We need to be able to be in the moment. And uh, I remember somebody asked me, another healer asked me the other day, he worked on me in this group session and he said, how do you feel right now? And I said, well, but he goes, no, right this moment, all you have is this moment. And I went, oh, um, joyful. <laughs> Hmm. I feel really good. Wow. wow. Thank you. You know, and, and so I think we are all called now to stand up in our own power, to be in the moment and see what it is that's out there for us and see what we can do to help everybody else. And um, now there's a lot of people who, you know, I, I just believe in, and I get a lot of, I've read a lot about this and I get it a lot, but when you are in service to other people, and not in servitude, but in service, hmm. you are creating a better world at, in every moment. And we really need that, hmm. you know, and that's what I believe is going on is we're getting ready 
for the people who are ready to hear this, for the people who are in our soul group and beyond who are ready to do this, it's our time. Mm. It's absolutely our time right now. And we share it. There's enough room for everybody. And we can all get there. We can all be there. And we can all make this a better place. And we can all make ourselves a better place to live too, you know? Mm. Yeah, I love that. What a what a great way of, of looking at that. And I think it's so essential and what I love about what you're doing, and even in our, our session the other day, you know, a couple of the things that, that transpired through the session, I was like, oh, wow. I mean, we were talking about, um, there, there was one thing you said where you said, even if she hasn't shown that she loved you unconditionally necessarily here on the physical plane, energetically right. speaking, she di- and it was like, oh, of course. Mm-hmm. And so that's, you know, because I think one of the things that people really struggle with is anybody, most, I, I would say 99.9% of the people who are listening, um, mm-hmm. they are ready for this, this right. transformation. Okay. Yeah. So what a lot of them struggle with and what I'm hearing from a lot is, is the people around them who they love, who they're not looking to just sort of like abandon their family and, you know, um, how they handle the situation when those people aren't necessarily ready and, you know, how they right. handle that, that um, inclination to go in and, and try to fix everybody else as well. So where, what's the balance with that? How do we start to tap into someone energetically, as we were just saying mm-hmm. with my, with my session that we did where I, mm-hmm. you allowed me to see the sort of unconditional love energy mm-hmm. of this person. Um, how do we tap into that without getting bogged down by the day-to-day baggage? Well, first of all, the first thing that comes to me is that you can only change yourself and you can't change anybody else. Now, I say that also knowing that the changes that you make inspire other people to change energetically. Right. Um, by being in the room with somebody who loves themselves, mm-hmm changes you. I was in the, the other day I was talking to a very close friend of mine and I was not in a great state. I wasn't feeling good. I didn't get a lot of sleep that night. I woke up like three or four times. So you know how you feel when you feel like, you know, you're kind of fingers yeah. in a socket every once in a while. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and so I wasn't really feeling myself very well. And I was talking to a friend of mine and I've known him, I don't know, 10 years probably 10 years. And I have never heard him this grounded. And I just had a conversation with him about his life, not even me. And I calmed down. Wow. And I got grounded. So you just have to remember that when you change yourself, that is the most power you have. It doesn't mean that you can't give people advice. It doesn't mean that you can't help them along the way, because obviously you can And if they're ready to, but let's say like you're saying, uh, you know, you've got people in your family who think what you do is mumbo jumbo. What? She's a coach, whatever, happy, love, whatever, rainbows and, you know, unicorns, right? (laughs) And, uh, (laughs) and that's okay because you don't speak that language around them. You talk to who you're talking to, but if you just come from just being yourself Mm -hmm. and you're more comfortable with yourself, they become just energetically much more comfortable with themselves. Whether or not it lasts or not is really up to them because they have to make those choices. But um, you can really kind of get to somebody's authentic self by just being yours. And like one of the things that we did with you and that I do with myself and other people is like we were talking about – what if you've never felt unconditional love from your mother, for instance, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe you have yep. a judgmental mother. Maybe she was so busy because she had so much stuff to do or so many things were going on in her life that she didn't know how to do that. So in this work, we can go, okay, well, let's, would you like to know who she is from God's perspective? So you can really understand her instead of her, her baggage. And then how would you like to know what it feels like to be unconditionally loved by her from her highest potential? And, and when that came, when, that command kind of came out of my mouth one day. I was like, oh, that's so interesting that we all mm. have this potential from the get-go. And we may not use it in this lifetime. Maybe this lifetime we've decided we're going to be couch potatoes, you know? 
And that's what we want to do. Maybe the life before we had dynasties and we, you know, conquered nations in this lifetime, you know, what? we're going to take it easy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got cable TV. I got everything I need, you know, <laughs> but you know, you got to honor and allow people just to be who they are. And then you just come in there and just be yourself and see what happens with that and be able to accept it. I've, I've come to believe that our lifetime relationships with people are about acceptance. Mm. And, you know, if you've got somebody who is never going to understand what you do, they're never going to appreciate what you do. They just can't acknowledge who you are truly, which, you know, are very big, long standing issues that people have. Then you just have to be fine with yourself. And accept that this is where their limitations are, and this is the way they've chosen to express themselves. It doesn't mean anything about you. It's mm. all about them. And once you can get to that place where you're not taking their behavior personally, because you know if they think that way about you and they're not acknowledging you, they can't be acknowledging themselves. They can be narcissistic. <laughs> right. They can be selfish, but... If they're talking that way to you, they're talking that way to themselves, even at a, a much more severe clip than they are with you. Hmm. So it's just knowing that that's going on and just being able just to accept somebody. It doesn't mean you've got to, you know, open up your boundaries to them, allow them to hurt you. They don't. If you have an abusive parent or abusive family and they don't want to change, you can do all the forgiveness work by yourself, Right. Yeah. And if you if you can't see them again or you can't be connected to them, you can still forgive them and accept them for who they are, but know that that's not a possibility for you. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, you can do whatever level of connection is, is best for you. Um, you know, you don't have to be somebody's best friend. That's not the point. The point is just to accept who they are and love yourself, and then you can get through anything. Yeah, and I love that you brought up, you know, you can't, because I think sometimes he, people hear, oh, ex accept other people and accept who they are, and they panic that that means you, then you get rid of all boundaries. And that's, right. in fact, you know, even in our session, that's exactly what you uh, really, that, that really came to light. And I was like, oh, okay, that's fantastic. So I can accept them, even mm -hmm. love their sort of infinite potential and, and, you know, what they truly are. Um, I can love myself and I can still have boundaries. And then, that's exciting, you know, because yeah. it's, it's not like, oh, but if I love them and accept them, I cut my left arm off. It's not that mm -hmm. at all. So, you know, I, that, that was a very cool thing that came up uh, with us. I would love, I don't know if this is, uh, is, is this a good time for us to kind of go into, because I think I can kind of feel everybody's like, Ooh, I'm, I'm ready. I want to do this. What is this? This is so cool. <laughs> Right. So um, is that something that we can we can do now on a sort of group yeah. level here? Right. Now, what what helps? Do I sort of set the intention for the group since I'm here speaking mm -hmm. as the group or? Well, first, go run to the kitchen and boil some water. We're going to need a lot of water and towels, hot towels. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> um, first, we're going to. Yeah, you can be the person who says yes. So the way we'll conduct this is like a theta session where I'll say, is it okay if I come into your space? And you'll say yes. At home, you don't need to say yes out loud. You can say it in your head. And all that does is give permission for this energy to come in and help access your subconscious and change these things. Okay? Fantastic. So, so, and then from there, I'll ask you, is it okay if you get God's perspective on this or that or how to do this or what it feels like to do this? Or a very common and fun one, let's take you back to whatever lifetime and level this happened and or that you believed this and can we change that? Mm. So I will start with that stuff and give like a basic healing so that everyone can can receive and keep any healing that they have from anybody. And then, and these are such important ones that, you know, in these 10 plus years that I've been doing this, I take them all the time. Every time I give them to somebody else you know, or have God download them to them that, um, I take them every time. Hmm. So they're always good. So is it okay if I come into your space and the space of everyone who would like, uh, this divine energy? Yes. Okay. All right. I'm going, I'm doing the meditation. Give you a blow by blow report. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Coming up and then coming into your space. 
Now, some people are going to feel this and, and feel like an opening in their crown chakra and their head. Some people won't feel anything at all. It just depends. But it is being witnessed by me. And even though I'm called the healer, I'm really the witness. And it's a pretty remarkable place to be able to sit, I have to tell you. Okay, here we go. So coming right in. All right. So first, is it okay if you get God, and I'm going to use the word God, but once again, if you want universe or source or any other name for you, please put it in there for yourself so it makes sense to you. Would you like uh, the universe's definition of unconditional love? Yes. Okay. And would you like to know what that feels like? Yes. Okay, great. This may be Kristen's second time getting all of these. <laughs> there we go. And let's have uh, God take us back to whatever lifetime and level you began to believe that you were unworthy of receiving God's definition of unconditional love. And is it okay if God changes that belief back there? Yes. Okay. So let's have God change that, wherever that was, whenever it happened, and then let you know what it feels like to consistently be worthy of receiving God's unconditional love. And then have God show you how to and what it feels like to receive God's unconditional love, okay? Mm hmm Okay. This stuff is really important. And one that just popped up a few months ago that I thought was so cool, to have God take you back to whatever lifetime and level you began to believe, that you were unworthy of God. Mm. And have God go change that back there. There we go. And I'm going to show you what it feels like to be consistently worthy of this. To be worthy of God. Know what that feels like. How to and what it feels like. There you go. That's a huge one. And especially mm -hmm. because there's a lot of prayer language out there that says, you know, God, even though we are not, we are unworthy of you, you love us anyways. Have you heard some of that before? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> well. This is the all-loving, com completely pure, unconditionally loving God that we're talking about. There we go. And then let's have God go back to whatever lifetime and level you began to believe you were unworthy of God's definition of joy. Okay? And let's have God change that. There you go. And then show you what it feels like what God's definition of joy feels like and what it feels like to be completely worthy of receiving God's joy and how do and what that feels like to have that. There we go. Beautiful. And then let's let you know what it feels like to be completely healthy from God's definition. Remind your cells and bring that into every cell of your body. I feel like that's a white light that just goes on in every cell. There we go. Good. Okay. And now let's let you go back to whatever lifetime and level you began to believe that you were unworthy of loving yourself unconditionally from the inside out and have God change that there. Is that okay? Mm, yes. All right. And let's show you what it feels like to be completely worthy of receiving your unconditional love. And we'll show you how to and what it feels like to love yourself unconditionally from the inside out. One of my favorite. I really believe that these are the places that we grow from. These are the places that worthiness in and of itself is one of the keys to, to getting what it is that you want out of your life. And if you're not, it's a place to look at. Okay. Um, and then let's do this around looking at some of the things that we're talking about around moving forward. So let's have God give you that definition, let you know how to, what it feels like to move forward, to bring more joy into your life. And when you think of it that way, it's much easier to say yes, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> yep. So there we go. There we go. And let you know what that feels like. And let you really deeply understand from wherever it was that you forgot that you are consciously and unconsciously co-creating with this energy of God all the time through your beliefs, through the way you walk in the world, your actions, everything. And then 
one of the other things that's really important is whenever that was, you began to believe that you were separated from God. And this is something that people have all the time. And that really messes with their ability to, to manifest also, right? So let's have God go back to whatever lifetime and level that occurred and, and change that. And show you what it feels like to know you are always connected to God. And to be open to an every cell of your body to connect with that source of support. It's always there. It is always there for us. And this thing about having self-defeating habits is around not feeling worthy, right? And that is uh, a big deal. And so let's go back to if you feel like you have some self-defeating habits, and you may just have them in little tiny places right now, or you may have them in big glaring places right now. <laughs> but wherever they are, just allow your mind to float to that. And let's just have God like what you were meant to learn from holding on to those habits. What was it that your subconscious was holding on to in hopes that you would learn this? Okay. And I'll show you how to stand up for yourself from God's perspective and what that feels like from wherever it was that you forgot how to do that. And wherever it was that you gave up your power to other people, to God, to any energy other than yourself. And let's have God change that. And give you God's definition of your power and show you how it's possible, that it's possible to stand in your power, how to and what it feels like to stand in that and still be safe and stay in your power without being punished for it, without being attacked. <laughs> and let's just have God release any trauma you've ever experienced, any punishment you've ever experienced, the energy of that from speaking your mind, from speaking your truth, from standing in your power, from being yourself. And just release that to God's light. And you'll only let go of whatever you feel comfortable with, which might be everything. Might be all of it. And it's going to be replaced with God's definition of support, God's definition of self-support, okay? And that knowledge of who you truly are from God's perspective. There we go. Nice. You feel that change? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very cool. And so now let's have God shift and change that habit to self-support. So we can show you what to do instead. And self-support is bringing in the right people at the right time. It's the way you speak to yourself and react to whatever happens. Right? And let's also go back to whatever lifetime and level you began to fear failure and have God go back there and give you God's definition of failure, which is just a mistake. <laughs> okay. And show you how you can learn from your mistakes without taking them personally and know what that feels like. That most really uber successful people out there and even the mediumly successful people out there <laughs> <laughs> and everybody in between makes a lot of mistakes, right? But the really successful people don't take it personally. They just go, oh, okay, well, uh, we lost our shirt on that one. So what did we do? Let's go back and look at the steps and change these things so next time we can get it going in the right direction, right? Yep. And that's what we're here to do now. Because I have a feeling, as psychic as I am, and I am extraordinarily psychic right at this moment, I will say that everyone on this call will make a mistake at mm -hmm. some point in time. I will bet a dollar. And I'm going to back that up with another dollar. There you go. Okay. So the next time you make a mistake, you can just go, huh, that was interesting. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> and let's figure it out. You know, there we go. And let's let God, let's let you understand who you truly are with all of these changes. And also be able to recognize all the good fortune that is coming towards you from God's perspective. Be able to recognize God's definition of love that's coming to you, God's definition of good fortune. So you can really see where it is in your life, where it's coming in, and start to just notice what's easier and better in your life after this. 
There we go. And then when you still have attention on the things that you know you really, really desire to make changes with, you can come to that with love and understanding. Like, you know, I tend to shoot myself in the foot. What can I do about this? Or where can I get some help for this? You know? Hmm. And just kind of come from that angle instead of just going, oh, my gosh, I always do this. Right? Yeah. It's always a good one. I did it again. Na, 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 na. <laughs> just like that song we sing. <laughs> Not too many notes, but uh, <laughs> just we get out of it, you know? We don't have to have that mantra. And then just understanding who we truly are from God's perspective. With all of this changed, with all of this intact, knowing who we are. There we go. Voila. Awesome. Mm hmm. I here's here's the things that I love about this. I mm -hmm. throughout will experience these moments where I'm like, oh, and it's almost like I try to put words to what's happening, and then and I can't. It's just a feeling, right. but it's like this this yeah. um, expansive feeling, and like it's like a a physical aha, if that makes mm -hmm. any sense, or an energetic aha that you can't put words to. Um, and and I do love the aspect of it that allows you to not take it all personally in that way. Right. You know, it, it, there's there's uh, there's like a a lifted vision of it that allows you to remove the personal aspect that is that is hurting you and holding you back. Mm -hmm. And I love your sense of humor with it all because that. Well, but truly, that lightens it as well. You know, I just yeah. think that's that's fantastic. And when we went through our session, that was something that I that I really came away from it with was, oh yeah, okay, right. This is it is funny. It's fun. You know, yeah. this is life, and it's so I, I love it. Now, do me a favor. Tell me, and you've shared several things, and I've even had you know. So after our session, everyone, I just want to fill you in because typically I'll ask Karen, and I still will. You know. What are some of the things that people experience when they're working with you? Well, the cool part is I get to share with you some of the experience. So um, I had several different relationships where there were um, there were just some old uh, negative energies, and they really kind of cycled. And I since then have um, had experiences with every single one of those people where. It wasn't just that I noticed the difference because then I might even be able to go, oh, well, of course I noticed it because I had the uh, session with Karen. So I knew, you know, right, I could play devil's advocate in that way. Other people who didn't know what I had experienced in my session came up to me um, and said, it, one in particular was an interaction with my mother and literally came up to me and said, that was a totally different interaction. What was going on there? Like, it was so much <laughs> Right? How cool, is that? How cool is that? I was like, what? <laughs> so, you know, just everyone, just so you know, because I wanted to be able to share my personal experience. And it, and it was a totally different experience. It was, it was lighter. I was able to appreciate and approach it completely differently, still with boundaries, still I was safe, but that was the difference. I felt completely safe throughout so I didn't feel like I was constantly protecting and had anything at stake. Um, and I think that that's huge. But the fact that other people who had no clue came up to me and were like, what was that? That was different. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's really cool. So do you have any other, uh, other stories or types of stories that you can share with us as well, just so we get an idea? Yeah, I, I had uh, my favorite one right now just happened a little while ago. Uh, there was a woman that I worked with who I just adore this woman. She's just such a cool person. And um, she had been looking for her what soulmate, the way we I talked about it is your most, and uh, the way Viana talked about it, your most compatible romantic soulmate. Mm. Because there's so many people who are soulmates, you want to get them on <laughs> what you live with. So anyways, we did a session on that and and we did this really cool little thing that it came came to me through the session which was bring his energy in hmm. and bring this energy of this person and I said you know I don't know if it's someone you don't know it might be someone who's a friend and just you know you've never looked at him this way it might be you know it's hard to tell but it kind of might be that it might be someone new but it's going to change you know and we just stayed in this energy of this love between these two people and 
I left, we both were like floating when we came out of the session. <laughs> and it made my day. I mean, it was just so incredible. So a little while ago, she texted me and she said, I met him. And it was exactly what you said. It was, it happened the way that you talked about. And I'm so happy. And I just wanted to let you know. And I just, I still have the text. I want, I want to bronze it. I don't even know what to do with it. Like I want to, I want to, I do, I want to etch it in stone and like hang it in my office. It just was such a cool moment, you know, and it yeah. was an old friend, you know, Wow. So that's really never cool. thought of that way. Huh. And the divine timing just had to come together. They had to, it had to be perfect for both of them. And it was perfect for her for a while, but it wasn't for him yet. And then once that happened, they they're together now and it's like amazing. And so that one is one of my favorites right now. I have an old one that, that I, that I love a a really wonderful woman also who was a hedge fund investor and she had gone, she had spiraled in about three months and she had been on a, a, a really major losing streak. And unfortunately the way the company was run was then your name was put up in red (laughs) <laughs> this lo- lovely system right and anyways it was it was just humiliating and it was making things worse for her so she knew it was energy because she had always been successful and this wasn't you know part of her thing so we worked on it for a while and when we finally got to what the bottom of the issue was we went oh it's that you know and mm-hmm. shifted it, you know, and, and I definitely had a lot of sessions with her. And, and then she went away and she was back in three weeks. And I said, well, how's it going? Have things shifted? She goes, in the last three weeks, I made $14 million back. Ooh. And yeah. And, you know, she was, she was dealing in lots of money. It wasn't like, oh, I put $50 on this thing and it went up to <laughs> 40 million. You know, she was dealing with a lot of money, but you know, and, and that was bigger than anybody else had made, you know, everyone was, that was a head turner. And so it was, it was really an incredible moment. And then the other thing that happened with her that was even, that was really cool also was she really figured out through these sessions, she didn't want to do that work anymore. Mm. She wanted to be at home. She wanted to have a business at home that was successful so that she could be there for her kids. And so she goes, and she goes, you know what? I'm, you know, I said, you're going to know when you're, she's like, when should I quit? Should I quit now? Should I quit in a month and two months, whatever said, it's going to hit you one day and you're just going to do it. Mm. And it happened that way. And one day she just walked in the office and went, today's a day. She packed up all of her stuff. She walked into her boss's office and said, I can't do this anymore and walked out. And the next week, I am not kidding you. She left on like a Thursday or a Friday, Monday that week, there was a major stock market adjustment her colleagues lost some of them lost 20 percent out of their portfolios and they all called her and said oh my god i wish i wish i had left last week like you just missed you know wow yeah and and uh and so she missed that and and so it's things like that you know money and love are good things um but those are the kinds of things that can happen that are pretty remarkable and, but I always say, even if you shift just a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, I always liken it to, you know, like having a cannon. If you, right. if you move the cannon one degree to the west, it, it hits a whole new village 300 miles yeah. away. Yep. So it's the same thing. Even if you're making subtle changes, it's going to move your path just enough to one direction where you're going to turn out and end up somewhere completely different. Mm, I love that. And and I love that, um, you know, it's sort of... Uh, if you're dealing with one area, it's going to end up ultimately affecting everything because we're talking about, you know, you as a, as a being. So I I love that. And you, um, you put together a special offer for everybody listening because obviously we could, I could literally sit here and talk to you for four days and I have, I have four days cleared right now. So if you want to do that marathon, I just need a little more food. (laughs) No, no, no. No, we're gonna okay. um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, there's so much more, but I love what you're doing because it is, there's, it's, it's not just empowering, um, in the sense of you're awesome and you can do it. It's truly like soul empowering. Like you right. feel it within your soul. Um, yeah. 
And I love that. So what I want to do, everyone, I, I, I'm going to have Karen talk you through her special offer, which this is really, really cool. So definitely go check this out. There's a special offer button on this page. You can just click that and it'll take you right there. So um, Karen, let us know what we're in for. This is so cool. This is called Manifesting Through Transition, How to Create Positive Change During Life's Defining Moments. So basically what this is, is a, I, I turned it into a 30-day program um, about when we are in challenging transitions in our life, okay? We all know what they are. They're, they could be death. They could be divorce. They could be um, whatever. You're moving to a new place. You know, that it, something that's challenging to you, that you're in a transition, there's a lot of programs out there that talk about manifesting things, but this, somehow I found this little crack. I've never seen anything about getting it done when your plate is already full for other reasons, okay? Hmm. So a lot of times what happens when it starts hitting the fan <laughs> is that other things in our life turn that same direction, and then things get really bad, and they start hitting this rock bottom kind of thing. And and it's hard because we're already dealing with event A and now we have B and C, right? And so what I wanted to do was just create something that could help support somebody and move them through their issues, whatever is going on with them, whatever that transition is, and then help them manifest. Mm -hmm. So the way it goes is that this is all these different recordings, all these different MP3 recordings. So there's an hour-long theta session that directly addresses the issues that come up around whatever this challenging transition is for you. And then once you do that, for 30 days, this is about 10 minutes or less before you go to sleep, there is a short theta meditation. And they're filled with energetic downloads that are going to work for you during your sleep and gently move you through your transition and guide your manifesting energy in the right direction, okay? Mm -hmm. So what I learned in all of my reading and whatnot and, and talking to people who I admire and reading their stuff is that, that what, however you, whatever you're thinking and feeling before you go to bed is what you steep in all night, right? And, and... So if you feel angry and you feel lost or you feel stressed out, you're going to have a lousy sleep and you're going to wake up in a lousy mood most likely. But if mm -hmm. you go to bed and what these, these evening meditations do is release tension. They let you know what it feels like to, to be safe and secure. I'll give you some of the sections that, that I, I broke it down into sections and then days like what just happened, like understanding what happened to you, allow yourself a space to be, you know, grieving this transition, what are the life lessons to, to and self-love and self-support, knowing the unknown, okay? This, this is like the first week, okay? The second section would be feeling safe and secure. The third one is releasing resentment. The fourth one, becoming a co-creator. And then the last one is gaining clarity and focus. So you see it kind of moves you through What's going on to get you to the point where you're getting these really beautiful downloads around how to manifest, which starts with like being loved and supported and enveloped by God and embraced by God and also has those and then how to manifest and bringing in those feelings so that, so that, you know, you're getting all this work done all night long that only took 10 minutes, you know, mm. to put in there. And, and what I've heard back from people you know, is that it's, it's really helped them move through it. And understand, I understand that even though, look, this is a 30-day program, and I'm, I'm saying day one, you do this, day two, you do this, day three, you do this, right? Mm -hmm. um, you may have a different pace. You may be at a different time. You can either, if you feel like you can't do it, you can stop it and start it. Um, but mostly, it's just really good work. So that regardless of where you believe you are in the moment about your transition, if you go through the program, you'll get what you need from it, okay? Hmm. You know, I can have a devious diabolical plan that I want you completely healed and manifesting, <laughs> you know, your mansion by the end of it. But you will do what is right for you, and you will get what is right for you. And also, it's nice to have this for yourself because – there's probably going to be more than one challenging transition in your life that you're going to go through. So right. for you to just have that for you, because at another time, 
it's going to help you. And it's going to help you in a different way because you're in a different place. And that's what I love about this work is that whenever you go to it, wherever you're at, it feels, you know, you're going to get something different from it and you're going to get more from it. And so I really, I really love this. I'm really proud of this, of, of these uh, MP3s. And I think, you know, I wanted people to get as much as they can and uh, without necessarily making a huge time investment, you know, mm. So I wanted them to get more for less, actually, if the, if I could put it that way. Uh, yeah, I love that. Um, okay. Let me ask you this. When people start, um, when they first start using it, what are some of the things that we could expect? You know, I mean, we even felt shifts on the call today. Mm -hmm. But what are some of the things that they could expect to start experiencing, you know, pretty quickly once they start working with, with what you have here? I think a sense of relief. Hmm. You know, <laughs> that the help is there, that support is there. Um, there's a lot of stuff just, to, you know, getting you out of the shock of whatever occurred, you know, because sometimes we're in that place where we've been traumatized by something and we're, just, we're walking around in the fog, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think it's lifting the fog, allowing you to know that it's okay where you're at. You're here for a reason and let's let's help heal so that you can move on with your life and bring more joy into your life. So I think you're going to, you're going to release a lot of stuff. You're going to release the trauma. You're going to release the shock. You're going to release the resentment and the anger and all of that negativity that you have around it. You're going to release whatever feels comfortable for you to release so that you can start moving forward. So hmm. I, I really feel like that is the gift of this. That is a huge gift. Okay. Now next question is this, because I think this is, this is pretty important. Is this only appropriate for people who have literally just experienced something? Or let's say you experienced a huge life change that happened 10 years ago, but you are still mm -hmm. stuck in it and struggling with it. Would you, can, does this apply to that as well? Absolutely. Because if you haven't let go, you know, I, whenever you have something like that, it just sits and waits for you to work on it. Mm. So <laughs> yeah. it'll be there. <laughs> They'll probably be happy that you brought this along. <laughs> hey, right. Okay, yeah. cool. So really, if there's anything that we're like, ooh, I'm still kind of attached to that thing that went on, mm -hmm. or uh, that's awesome. What a, what a unique um, tool that you're getting. It is a gift to be able yeah. to experience relief from something, whether it is something that's happening right now or very recently, or something that we just never seem to have completely freed ourselves. That's really mm -hmm. cool. Um, again, really simple. Just go ahead and click on the special offer button that's on this page and bam, we take you right there. Um, so this was so cool. I loved this call. I love your energy. I love your sense of humor. I just think you're really fun and light and awesome, you know, cause this, the, the group listening here, and by the way, mm -hmm. everyone, you're just absolutely extraordinary. They are, they're really savvy and they love this stuff and they are ready. I mean, this is the epitome right. of a group of people who are, who are ready, but they also want to know that this stuff actually applies to real life. And it's not just sort of, you know, we can go float off in the cloud somewhere. So thank you for right. that because you really did authentically um, deliver that today. And I really appreciate that about you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's been, it's, it, it's quite an honor to be here. It really is. Oh, it's, it's, it's awesome having you here. Okay. So here's my last thing. And um, this is what we need to know. What do you need us to know before we leave you today? That your power has always been there. It has always been there and it's just been waiting for you to let it wake up and wake up inside of you. And it's, it's really in your authenticity. And when you say, okay, it just stands up. It's, you know, your inner lion has been sleeping for a long time <laughs> and it just wants to stand up and help you out here and move you forward. And it's, it's our time. It's your time. You know, it's my time. It's all of our time right now to really, really embrace good fortune and embrace making that happen for others also. And we can do that. We don't all have to hang our shingles as a coach or a healer or a therapist or a doctor um, to do this. We can, you heal people by just being yourself in every situation that you come to. And, um, when you become, as you become more authentically yourself, those are the kinds of people that you attract because the other ones don't want anything to do with you. And those <laughs> other ones might be just clogging up your life for no good reason and distracting you from who you truly are. And so 
now is that time. Now is that time to be in the moment and just and take it back. Take it I back because you're just gonna you're gonna thank yourself profusely after that for the rest of your life, you know? Mm, I love that. Yes. Yeah, so everyone, you're first of all, you are your great, amazing, extraordinary group of people. I love being able to to be here with you. And exactly what Karen said is true. Your power has always been there. Um and and so yes, this it's time to take it back. And I'm excited for each and every one of you. And Karen, I just need to say thank you one more time. I can't wait till we get to do this again. It's just been so much fun. Anytime. This is really you're a lot of fun and I would love to play with you any other time. Awesome. And until the next time, everyone, keep manifesting. Bye-bye, y'all.
Oh,